Hey everyone, Tom Rafferty. I want to talk today about what I call ping pong player bosses. Let's say you have a boss that uh, you go into and you say, I need help with X, Y, or Z. I've been trying to do a certain project. I've been trying to work with a certain uh, partner of ours, another company, but I'm hitting obstacles and I don't have enough stripes on my sleeve. I don't have enough uh, power to really move the ball forward anymore. I really need your help to enable this process because you have the force of uh, the power of your office and you can make things happen by picking up a phone or sending an email. And I just need a little bit of help from you to uh, get my job done. And the boss will hit the ball back to you. They'll ping pong the problem back to you. So they won't pick up the phone and make a call or send an email or uh, solve the problem. What they'll do is tell you that you should have done more. They'll say, well, why did you wait so long to come in and talk to me? And you'll be thinking, so long? What do you mean so long? I waited until there was a need to talk to you. Or they'll say, um, well, why don't you do this or why don't you do that? Or why don't you call this one and copy me as if you can copy someone on a phone call? Um, they will always ping pong the ball back to you and never catch that ball and do what needs to be done, which is to solve the problem. Now, there's definitely a, a, a counterpart to the ping pong boss, and that's a boss who helps you solve problems. And, you know, I had a boss, maybe more than one, but certainly one that I'm thinking of. Um, whenever you went to this person's office with a problem, by the time you left that office, the problem was solved. Very impressive problem solver. Certainly practiced the do it now habit rather than kicking the can and procrastinating. And most importantly, they help their employees to do their jobs. And ultimately that's, uh, one of the primary reasons that a boss is there. So the opposite of a ping pong player boss is a boss who, you know, has the uh, the buck stops here sign on their desk and make sure that they solve your problem. And ideally, before you even leave their office, and I realize a lot of people aren't in offices today and um, people are working virtually, but uh, so perhaps the, the analogy is a boss who, uh, connects you in on a, uh, a multi-person phone call or a video meeting and gets the problem solved right then and there and you walk away from that meeting with your problem solved rather than a boss who finds excuses not to help you because quite frankly two reasons one they're lazy and two they don't like conflict. They don't mind telling you you're doing a bad job because you're an underling, but anyone who's equal or above them, they're probably afraid of. Um, they're probably fearful to contact and have any kind of uncomfortable conversation with. And most of the time when you actually converse with people, the conversation goes well, but it's that fear of a conversation. It's that fear of potential conflict that prevents a ping pong player boss from, from solving your problem. So you go to them and they come up with every excuse why you need to do more. You could have done uh, 15 steps in trying to solve this problem. And they're going to say, well, why don't you do step 16 through 27? There's always a reason why they can't solve your problem. And it's a very manipulative personality that you're dealing with because if you notice this, if you notice this happen once, you're going to notice it happen again. Um, bosses who do this tend to do this regularly. And certainly if you are a boss, don't be a ping pong player boss. Don't hit the ball back to your employee and invent other steps they should have taken before they came into your office. I would say if you are a leader, if you are a boss, if you are a manager, be aware of how you talk to your employees because every time you ping pong the ball back to them you're driving them closer to looking for another job they're going to notice it over time and not everyone has the personality type to confront you with it you're the boss they're always going to worry that you're just going to fire them or make their life miserable if um, if they bring things up to you that are unpleasant about you so you have to be very aware of 
the consequences of how you talk to your employees and how you dismiss your employees, even though you're dismissing them in a, um, you know, you're dismissing them in a deceptive way, acting like there's all these other steps they need to take before you can possibly do anything to help them. Meanwhile, you know, the take charge boss over here, um, you walk into their office and they don't care if it was one or 50 steps you took before you walk in that office, they want your problem solved and they're going to solve your problem for you before you leave that office so that you can do your job. I mean, that's just common human decency and common courtesy, but it's also smart business because a boss is there largely to enable you to do your job and to give you what you need to do your job and to create the situations and environments that are conducive to your job getting done. So if you're a leader, don't be a ping pong player boss. If you're an employer and you notice that your boss is a ping pong player, it's a, a tough position to be in. You might want to say something to them, but I don't know your boss's personality. Maybe you do. And if you think it's okay that some bosses do take things well and they do take criticism well, some do not. Um, this is a function of human nature, not just being a boss. Some people do not take criticism well. Some people do and will uh, make corrective action to better themselves and to better the relationship with you. But um, not everybody will do that. So if you're in a position where you have a ping pong player boss, you need to tread carefully, um, evaluate your options. One of the options, of course, is looking for another job. Because if you're always going to your boss and they're never solving your problem, then your life at work might be a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Um, you know, and there's always trying to go around them and just um, kind of thinking them out of the equation since they won't help you anyway. Um, try to solve all your problems yourself or through coworkers or through your colleagues. Uh, it's a tough position to be in. So I would say if you have a ping pong player boss that you report to, be careful, consider all your options, uh, try to work around them if it's possible. But if you are a ping pong player boss, or if you are someone who's on the way to being a boss or a leader or a manager, be very mindful of what you say and how you say it to your employees. Every time you dismiss or disregard your employee or con them, into just getting them out of the office or getting them off the phone and kicking the can and then never getting back to solving their problem. You're driving them closer to the door. And um, it's very expensive to bring new employees on board and to hire them and to train them and to get them, you know, to get them to know where the water fountain and the coffee machine are. This takes time and money and uh, effort and energy and it's a bit painful for everyone involved. It's awkward to have someone new in the office. They take up the uh, time and effort of other employees who need to be doing their job, but they have to help their their new coworker. And most people are very kind about that. Um, but as an organization, as a whole, it's not so much of an asset. It's more of a liability. So don't be a ping pong player boss. And if you have a ping pong player boss, be very careful, but be on the lookout for that behavior. If you see after three times, four times, five times going into your boss's office or contacting your boss and asking for help, that they always seem to be inventing excuses or saying that you should have done more steps than you did, that's probably a ping pong player boss. And there's a good chance that boss is never going to really help you. And that boss is simply a bad leader. Um, probably a manager who functions well enough at their job to keep their job, but not a good leader. And um, I would suggest you think about how to get your job done without involving them, since they're probably worthless uh, in problem solving for you anyway. Think, think, think about how to get your problem solved without them, if at all possible. And um, you know, always uh, keep in mind the fact that you can look for another job. So. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but um, I want to make you aware of the ping pong player boss because employees can go years being manipulated like this and, and never notice it. Um, so 
before so much time gets wasted, just be on the lookout for it. And um, if you are a ping pong player boss, become a better leader and help your people when they come to you for help. Don't hit the ball back to them. Run with the ball. Thank you as always. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.